this is a utility knife. Poles, blocks, clip it. Uses the common replaceable Stanley utility knife blades. Relatively common to see these knives used around here. Very straight people. This is just one of the common examples. Very recently, as part of an evaluation on a new cubic boron nitride rods for the sharp maker, I was doing some work using the cubic boron nitride rods to sharpen these uh, standard replaceable utility blades and as well sharpening them with the medium sharp maker rods and a couple of other finishes and comparing them in terms of edge retention over a number of different materials cut in a number of different ways. And one of the things that I found particularly when I used them on cardboard was that the edge retention of the medium rods initially was relatively poor and I had seen that in the past and I had figured what the reason was is that the medium rods because they re remove such little metal the damaged material on the edge from the cardboard cutting wasn't getting removed so that when I was doing edge retention runs I was doing it with weakened steel so to check that I cut the edge off shaped it with a 700 grit Bester water stone and then micro beveled it with the medium grit rods and the edge retention dramatically increased. Now there were some very interesting comments and questions on those videos and a number of people asked things like well are these effects the same regardless of the steel and does it matter what and how you are cutting? Those are very good questions and the answer is that the type of steel and how and why you are cutting have very significant influences on what you actually see in regards to those effects. They are true in general, but how much the extent of each changes dramatically. So as an example which goes completely to the other side. I did a run with this. This is made from ZADP 189. It is significantly harder and significantly stronger and significantly more abrasion resistant than the steel used in utility knife. So that apex on the ZADP 189 is not going to bend and deform as much it's just going to slowly wear down and it might microchip a little bit. As well I switched media so when I was doing the cardboard cutting cardboard is decently abrasive but it's also relatively stiff and you gotta put a lot of force into the cuts and you might think you're doing a perfectly straight cut but if you looked at that under high magnification you would find that the blade is twisting back and forth because you can't move in a perfectly straight line. So as the blade twists back and forth that little apex twists back and forth as well and it's constantly bending. And just like a spoon if you take it and bend it back and forth it's easy to get it to the point where it breaks due to fatigue. So with the cardboard I was having to do a very high volume of cuts hundreds of slices in order to wear the blade down. So that's hundreds of slices on a relatively stiff material so that edge was bending back and forth, bending back and forth and I was also using a relatively weak steel which would naturally want to bend back and forth more under those loads. So I used a much stronger steel, much harder steel, and I cut a relatively soft but very abrasive material. I had some one inch very dirty polypropylene rope and I cut it up into little tiny pieces. And I found because the rope was so dirty I could get a significant amount of blunting even though I only did 62 slices. So I was doing not very many cuts on a very hard and strong steel. So what I figured was the edge wouldn't be that stressed 
even though it would be relatively dull. Because again, I didn't have that repeated back and forth bending, I just had slow wear from the dirt that's in the polypropylene rope. And because this knife cuts so very well, because it's zero ground, the forces used in the cutting are going to be relatively low. So in that case, I suspected that the medium grit rods would be able to resharpen the edge perfectly adequately and not suffer from premature edge failure due to damaged steel being left on the edge because the edge wouldn't be that damaged anyway. So, took the edge, sharpened it with the really coarse cubic boron nitride rods, 62 cuts into the used polypropylene rope, resharpened it, did it again, resharpened it, did it again, resharpened it, did it again, resharpened it, did it again. So I had a number of trials that I can look at edge retention and initial sharpness and make sure that they're consistent. And the performance of the cubic boron nitride rods was consistent. Back to the same initial sharpness, same edge retention over and over. Now I knew that was going to happen. They're very coarse and they remove enough steel that you get back to a fresh edge. Interestingly enough, the medium rods did the same thing. Again, because the steel is much harder, the steel is much stronger, it's able to resist bending so it doesn't get that fatigue. Plus, I was doing a very low volume of cuts because the material was so abrasive, so the edge wasn't going to be bending back and forth that much. Plus, because the fact it was so abrasive, it's going to wear off any fatigue steel anyway. So, the medium rods could achieve a very consistent level of performance both in initial sharpness and edge retention. Now the very last run that I did with the medium rods was a little bit lower, but that could just be due to random variation. But again, you'll see, I had to do quite a number of trials before I even saw that one dip. And most people are not going to cut nearly that amount of dirty used polypropylene rope. So ideally, I'd want to do a much longer run, say look at 20 sessions of resharpening to see if you would see an issue. That would be interesting to do, but that's a lot of rope and I only had enough to do around 5 sessions uh, with each one. But the medium rods were able to hold their performance. Now, in regards to the performance, the initial sharpness was much higher off the medium rods and that you'd sort of expect because, again, the coarse rods are just very coarse. And they're coarse enough that the actual push cutting sharpness is so low that it actually compromises somewhat the initial slicing aggression. And you can see that if you look at a very coarse saw versus a relatively fine saw. A very coarse saw can take more force to get going and that's the sort of what you're seeing with extremely coarse finishes. But the very coarse finish was able to hold on to that sharpness much better in slicing. And at the end after doing the 62 cuts it was about twice as sharp as the medium grit rod finish even though the medium grit rod finish was twice as sharp initially. That wasn't too surprising, and again, most people sort of know that if you're cutting sort of dirty used rope, then a very coarse finish gives you not only solid cutting ability, but very good edge retention. But the interesting thing is, I just wanted to put up a data point, because I want to show, and the main point of this is not to give hard and fast rules, as in you must do this in every case. Because things like edge angles, edge finishes had to be suited to the material you're cutting, how you're cutting, your strength and skill level. Similar, do you always have to cut the edge off before you start the sharpening? Depends on how damaged the steel is at the edge. And if you cut a relatively soft material that's relatively abrasive and your steel is relatively hard and very strong, it's not going to bend back and forth very much. 
if it's really high in terms of cutting efficiency, you're likely not going to chip it out because your cutting ability, your control will be very high. So all you'll get is basically wear of the edge from the dirt. So there's no real amount of fatigue metal left on the edge and you can likely get it back to sharp with even the medium grit rods and you don't need to reset it. But when you move to something like very stiff cardboard, which is not nearly as abrasive as a dirty polypropylene rope, and you're having to do cut after cut after cut after cut, literally hundreds of them, then all that bending back and forth from the hundreds of cuts could put a lot of fatigue on the edge. If you use a softer steel which is weaker, that could bend the edge back and forth enough that you're going to need to do something a bit more dramatic to get that weakened material off the edge. And again, this is where it comes from a little experimentation that you do, that you just see, does the initial sharpness improve, does the edge retention improve if I start with a more coarse abrasive and cut some of that damaged material off the edge, or is my use light enough? Is my use abrasive enough? Is my steel strong enough that I'm not getting fatigue and it's tough enough that I'm not getting cracks? In that case, a relatively fine abrasive might be all that you need.